Welcome everybody, my name is Wilson Alvarez with MiamiBusiness.com and it is my true pleasure to be here today with Adrian Artidiello. Uh, he is the Director of Operations with Empire Social. Welcome Adrian. Thank you so much for having me, it's awesome to be here with you. Awesome, awesome. So tell me a little bit about Adrian Artidiello. Well, I guess I got, you know, the first thing that I would like to say is uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be born and raised in Miami guy. You know? um, I owe a lot to uh, being here in Miami and uh, the culture we have here has been awesome. It's been it really impacted my business career. And um, Like I said, born and raised here. I went to school, my high school here, um, proud graduate of uh, Westminster Christian School. Nice. Um, where I played uh, baseball and that led me to a Division One baseball uh, opportunity where I ended up choosing a school in New Jersey and um, graduated from FIU. So again, local um, with a business degree and uh, I, have a, I have a family, a beautiful wife uh, with uh, Two kids, two beautiful boys, and another one on the way. So awesome! Um, how, how old are your children? Uh, six and four. Six and, six the, and four. Are they playing t-ball yet? Or? No, no, they're both doing karate, uh, which is good because they need a little bit of discipline. Uh, you can imagine two young boys uh, running, running bunches throughout the house. But uh, we're excited to have a little baby again, and that'll be really fun. That's so. nice. That's nice. I know that one of my dreams when I had my, you know, my my son mm -hmm. was to. I, I also play baseball. Right. Not that I never got into the professional, mm -hmm. but I did the softball thing in Tropical Park. Yeah. Of course. And um, that was a lot of fun, but I always wanted to be a little league manager, mm -hmm. dad, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. And that never happened, but I have a grandkid on the way. There you go. So, or Congrats. actually a grand, I don't know what it is yet. But nice, yes. nice, awesome, man. That's, yes. that's the best. That's so, the best. So, um, so you went to Westminster, yep. then after Westminster, you went to? I went to a, 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 a university in New Jersey called Fairleigh Dickinson University. Um, you know, and then I, I made a business decision or a life decision to to uh, end my baseball career and come back home and focus on school and, and start working and uh, I think it's worked out pretty well for me. I'm happy. <laughs> nice. With, uh, what with position did you play? I played center field. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So you had the wheels. I, I, I like to say that. Yeah. 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 That's, that's I'm awesome. a humble guy, so I don't really like to yeah. brag. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's good. That's great. I, I love I love baseball talk. Um, so if I understand correctly, you started. You came back. Yeah. And wh where? What was your first job? So when I came back. Um, I, I, you know, so much of my life was dedicated to baseball, right? And that kind of just left a void of like energy and ambition in my life. So uh, I started working. I actually started working in a law firm because uh, at that point in my in, in my university career, I was I was really looking to go into law school. And I actually took my LSATs and everything right right when I was getting ready to graduate. And then I kind of just made a U-turn and said, you know, this, this I don't think this is for me. Like I I, I couldn't see myself working in a in a in an office every day and going to court and, and it just it just didn't seem like something that would make me happy long term. So um, I quit my job and I went to go be a busboy <laughs> at a restaurant and my mom was not happy. Um, wow. But um, but, um, you know, I told her to trust me and and uh, I had a plan. Um, and you know, luckily for me, I was able to um, I identified wanted to go directly to the best places possible. And I was lucky to get a, 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 an opportunity to be a, a busker in lowest level position at the, the Betsy Hotel, which is a Forbes four-star hotel on the beach, yeah. and um, that really propelled my career, and I met a great mentor there, and also I was able to work my way up to management within two years um, working there, so that really, really set me up for success. Nice. A any uh, notable restaurants that you've uh, worked with or oh, yeah. worked in? Uh, or? A few. Um, so, the, I, you know, I started my career at the Betsy, um, and uh, we, we, you know, it was BLT steak there with our celebrity chef, Laurent Turandel. Uh, after that, I moved to Spain for two years, and I was overseeing a few locations, uh, restaurants there. Came back to work with uh, celebrity chef Chef Morimoto at the Shelbourne Hotel. Um, nice. Went to go on to work and open the Fina Hotel with celebrity chef Francis Malman. It's an Argentina. amazing place. Yeah, great, yes. great spot. And then uh, I was at Juvia, uh, the rooftop restaurant hotel, restaurant. I'm sorry, in uh, in uh, Lincoln Road. I was there for four years and helped them open a couple concepts. And uh, then I went on to go back to hotels and be food and beverage director. Places like the SLS and stuff like that, and now I am where I am. So that's amazing. Yeah. So, so how, how did you how did you get from uh, one sector to? Uh, I guess it's the same. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's still considered hospitality. Yeah, um, but it, it's a it's a it's a world of difference, right? Whenever you're dealing with food and and chefs and and restaurants, it's a completely different business model, completely different um, everything, you know. So, um, I would say the way that I got to really where I was was, you know. Um, COVID kind of kind of made me take the stop, a mandatory mm -hmm. stop, um, and think you know when I when I when I didn't have my job anymore and I was working at the SLS Brickle uh, and I was overseeing 100 employees and you know 
six different outlets and working 70 hours a week and uh, and then that suddenly just disappeared and now I'm at home with my two kids and kind of forced me to stop and think about like what is it do I really want to do that forever you know um, and I was kind of burnt out and I kind of just said you know what I, I gotta I gotta pivot I gotta do something else um, and luckily I've, I've always maintained great relationships with you know with everyone that I've come across and everywhere that I've worked and um, the director of operations at Morimoto when I worked at Morimoto at the Shelburne in Miami Beach um, we maintained a great relationship and at that time he was actually at, uh, he, at that time he, uh, we're talking 2020 uh, he was the, the partner a partner and director of operations at um, at Empire Social and so you know he had an, an opportunity there and he called me and said hey man we've always talked about it we've always talked about reconnecting and getting working again and and I even put my hands up. I'm like, listen, I don't even know if I want to do hospitality anymore. I'm burnt out. And he kind of, we talked, and I trusted him. And he's like, this is different, man. This is not like running a restaurant. This is, this is, this is, uh, this is fun. You know, this is something that we can have fun doing. Get all the good parts of what we love about the business without most of the bad stuff. And so I gave it a chance, and it's really worked out for me. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. So uh, how how many locations do you have at Social? So when I first started, um, uh, Empire we, Social. Yeah, we had our Brickle location, which mm -hmm. is I was mainly working out of. Um, and we had just started uh, our Dadeland location. Um, and um, so now we're two years into Dadeland, and now we're working on our third. Uh, we're looking at, we're, we're already um, broken ground in a, on a Los Olas location. Nice, so, so yeah. you're moving on up. Yeah, yeah. Up to we're expanding that's and growing, nice. so that's it's fun. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I have visited both locations, mm -hmm. and they're absolutely. Thank you. They're amazing. If you're a cigar guy, absolutely the place to be, yeah. uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and the ambience is great. The atmosphere is fantastic. And, and you know what? It's not it's not a smoky environment. Absolutely. You know, we pride uh, ourselves on that, actually. Yeah? yeah. So, so tell me about that. And, and, and let me just say, I've, I've gone to other uh, cigar establishments, and, and I'm not talking bad about them, but there really is a difference when you walk into Empire Social and... You can smell the cigars. Yeah. You can smell the smoke, but it's not that overwhelming, yeah. you know, cloud. I would say that's the number one problem with cigar lounges, right? You ask anybody, even cigar yeah. smokers, they'll tell you it's smoky, it's uncomfortable. And even at cigar lounges, you'll find a lot of people that sit outside, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, we, we, we don't like to say that we are a cigar lounge. And one, one, of the, one of the things, reasons behind that is because as equally as much as we are a cigar lounge, we're also a whiskey bar. Right, and so uh, you've seen you've seen our Brickle location, right? We yeah. have 270 whiskeys there. But you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on the most is the fact that we're not a smoky environment. And we we identified that as a problem. You know, even you know, Brickle's been open for seven years now, but our ownership um, at the very beginning they made a, a key decision to um, make sure that they um, spend the necessary money to make sure that we buy the best um, air system possible. We're talking HVAC and extraction. You know, we don't filter air there. Um, it's it's a complete like think of it like a kitchen right it's complete 100 air replacement so 100 percent air out and 100 percent clean fresh air in uh, so it's a complete extraction of air replacement system and it's not cheap but it pays itself off over and over again because you feel comfortable you feel comfortable to bring uh, your, your lady Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and, and ladies feel comfortable and, and guests and clients and let's be sure. honest right you're not going to be a bar in miami for very long if ladies don't feel comfortable going that's there. right so so it's a it was a business decision 100 percent first forward and and also just um and also we consider ourselves a luxury place and uh, we need to make sure that we are doing everything possible to make sure we i can absolutely tell you that from cigar bars you guys are definitely a step above yeah we, that, I mean, we try really hard man yeah. that's my that's my personal opinion and, and I have many friends that smoke cigars and they tell me the same thing. Well, that means a lot. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. So what is the future of Empire Social? Yeah, so that's a, good, that's a great question. You know, I feel like in the last two years that I've been there, you know, we've really focused on like that question. What what, what does our future look like? And I think um, we've identified, uh, you know, I guess our SWOT analysis on our strengths and weaknesses, our opportunities and threats. And, and, and we've tried to kind of plug the holes of what our weaknesses are and, um, you know, we're opening up Las Olas, and we're, we, we've really put all of our brain power together to make the best version possible of Empire Social now that we've opened. Actually, the, actually, for our ownership, it's going to be the third one, because the original one was in Boca. Um, it was called, it was called uh, Empire, it's, it wasn't called Empire Social, it was called Casa de Men's Crystal by Prime Cigar, okay. which the Brickle location op opened under that same name, right? And that Boca location opened up 12 years ago. Um, but they ended up selling it to Altidus, which owns Monte Cristo. Okay. Um, and so when we went to go open our Dayland location, we had to rebrand, right? So now we're, we're called Empire. 
Um, but we've, uh, we've, we, you know, with you know, ownership and myself and, and Pete, um, my, my partner, and, and uh, uh, we, you know, the one that we used to work together at, mm -hmm. at Morimoto, we, we've pulled all of our brain power together to kind of figure out what is the most optimal, op, op, optimal use of space, the most efficient use of our, of, our, of our resources and money in regards to uh, designing the space and how much square footage is the right amount for a humidor. Where should we put our lockers? All those questions, and we feel like we've gotten better and better every time. And I think the culmination of that will be leading to Las Olas and um, and and beyond. You know, we're already looking at other other cities to so, go to. So, so Las Olas is your, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's 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 the perfection from the. Prior I, I mean, to I never want to say perfect, right? But I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be um, the, the the most the most um, beautifully designed space we've done for sure. Um, you can go online and see the renderings right now uh, on our nice. website at EmpireSocialLounge.com. The space is going to be beautiful. Um, we've also identified that some of our weaknesses right now are, you know, in our business model is 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 dinner time and lunch, right? Because we don't have a kitchen. And we realize that. So, uh, actually, ownership. Can you can you have a no, kitchen? No, legally legally you cannot. It's a Clean Air Act, so you can't have a kitchen. We can serve food, and we do serve food at both. Um, at Brickell, for example, we have a, a full lineup of charcuterie and charcuterie boards and smoked fish dip. Um, and our license allows us to to sell pre-prepared food. Smoked, smoked fish, fish dip. Wow, How not, what, appropriate. Not a coincidence, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, but it works really well, and people love it. And it's a local product, and we support local. We try to do so as much as possible. We get all of our we get all of our charcuterie from from Pericones and Brickle. Um, so we try to we try to help out small businesses like help out businesses help out as much of course, as possible. Yeah. That's part of who we are. And so, um, and so um, when when we uh, when we when we identified this, we we're like, okay, well, what can we do? So. We, we actually purchased our location in, in, in Las Olas. We own it. And we also own the space next door. So uh, it's going to be a 3,500 square foot space for us and also the 3,500 square foot space next door. What's the logical thing to do? It's rent it to a restaurant, right? Yeah. Uh, so at least it's a restaurant. And so our plan is to hopefully um, work with them to have food served inside um, nice. with for, with them. Um, and now you can go to Empire Social Las Olas. Hopefully it's a plan. Sit at the bar and if you're hungry, grab a steak and smoke at the same time. And so that's that's going to be a huge um, competitive advantage for us. So Las Olas is thirty five hundred square feet. Yeah. How, how large is the is the Brickle? Brickle is about forty three hundred. Okay. Um, so it's, and Dayland's so, twenty six. Okay. So it's in between. Uh, yeah. So it's in between, but it's just the right size, right? Because you know, and we learned we learned our lessons, right? We, in Brickle, I think we used a lot of space for things that weren't necessary. Um, I think our, uh, you know we're, we're making the humidor a little bit smaller, but. But not we're not going to lose that much that mm -hmm. much storage space because we're, we're we're being smart about how we design it, right? Right. And so that opens up more space for seating. And then also in Brickell we have a disadvantage because we're on the second floor, and so we don't really have a terrace, right? But but at Las Olas we do, right? So nice. so you know we I think we will be able to have just as many seats as Brickell, if not more, um, at Las Olas. So very good. Yeah. All right. So last question for today. Yeah. What's your favorite cigar? Man, that's such a good question. Um, you know the way the way that I like to put this question is like I'm a I'm a wine guy, right? So working in the restaurant field and I'm a psalm and I have a huge passion for wine and and, and to believe and believe it or not, wine and cigars are very very similar. You're talking about terroir, like the land that they come from, and mm -hmm. and and the different varietals, so the different tobacco, leaves, like the different grapes and fermentation and the way that they're aged and all that stuff. It's very very a lot of similarities between wine and 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 and, uh, and cigars, and so. Um, I, for me, it's like asking me what, what's my favorite wine to drink. It's like it depends on the day, right? It depends on what I'm doing. It's like um, if I'm looking for something a little lighter, if I'm looking for something a little stronger, you know, white wine, red wine. So it's it's a it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a good question. But I guess I guess the better question would be like what am I what am I smoke what am I gonna smoke today when I get to work? Right. Um, I guess if I had to pick one right now, the first one I have in my mind that pops up is a uh, uh, Placencia Ma Fuerte. Placencia. Yeah, hexagon. I don't know. I feel like having something substantial today. Nice. Uh, I love Placencia. 100% Nicaraguan tobacco. Just a beautiful cigar. Um, and we have a lot of beautiful cigars in our humidor, but that's just the one that I feel like I would grab if I walked into our humidor right now. Awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, it was great having you here today. Thank and, you. Uh, I look forward to conducting many more of these. Uh, I think I think it's a fun topic um, for the cigar connoisseurs and yeah. for people that just love the, you know the whole social environment of going out and having a great time. So I want to thank you for being here, and I do want to thank everyone for uh, being a part of our show. Uh, MiamiBusiness.com. If you need anything, please uh, reach out and let us know. It was great having you. Thank you.